Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, March 29th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jesse today wrote about how to collect the packet captures in a home lab network and well, what the different options are and what sort of the different traffic you're seeing based on where you are placing your sensors. The nice thing here is he used sort of a fairly uh, cheap Netgear switch with a span port in order to collect packets. It's actually not a bad option for sort of a home network like this. Not great in the sense that the tab is probably better but then again uh, those switches are significantly cheaper and uh, do the job quite well in uh, the, with the traffic level that you typically have in a lab network like this so interesting post here also he's comparing some of the different sensor types that he's using and what type of traffic he's seeing in each and Microsoft really wants you to patch your Exchange servers, in particular if you're hosting them in Microsoft's cloud. And the way they're now putting sort of additional pressure on administrators of out-of-date and unpatched and vulnerable Exchange servers is by throttling email from those known vulnerable servers to Exchange Online. As Microsoft put it, uh, if your uh, exchange server is vulnerable, it's potentially exploited and email can't really be trusted from uh, this exchange server. There's sort of a warning phase of 30 days where you'll just see in your dashboard that the uh, mail server is uh, out of date and needs to be updated. Then there's an incremental increasement sort of every 10 days where they start actually blocking email. And then after 90 days, if you're still not patched, uh, well, uh, they will block all of your email. You have the option to sort of remove that block, uh, but only for 90 days per year. The only other option is, well, uh, to get your Exchange server up to date. But uh, if you're sort of reading it, the focus really seems to be around just uh, turning off the server and probably move uh, to Exchange Online or uh, some of uh, Microsoft's cloud services instead of trying to maintain your own Exchange server. Of course, this comes after two years of a few high-profile exchange vulnerabilities that were heavily exploited. So Microsoft really tries uh, to emphasize that the exchange servers, well, uh, they require work to sort of uh, get them uh, going and uh, working properly. And then we got to, well, yet another uh, 802.11 vulnerability. Uh, this vulnerability is sort of interesting uh, because it's relatively uh, basic. So kind of surprised that it, it took quite a while to uh, discover it. And it's around the power saving features in 802.11. So the option here is that a device uh, can basically go to sleep. And before it does so, it uh, does send a frame to the access point, notifying the access point that it's now asleep and to buffer frames destined for it. The access point will now buffer any frames destined to the device that's asleep. Once the device wakes up, it sends another message and is then able to retrieve those frames. The tricky part here, of course, is that all of these frames can get spoofed. So an attacker could spoof the frame where the device goes to sleep, then could also, again, spoof the wake up frame. But before doing so, the attacker could also change the encryption parameters, essentially turning it off, which would then result in these queued frames being transmitted in the clear. This is part of a weakness of the standard. Uh, it's uh, widely affecting a number of different devices of uh, different manufacturers. And the flaw could at least be used to inject uh, data into existing uh, connections to, for example, as it's pointing out here, inject malicious JavaScript or launch some uh, TLS attacks that require injecting of additional traffic. Cisco published a bulletin regarding this vulnerability and uh, make some recommendations as to what uh, configurations to use in order to prevent exploitation of uh, this vulnerability. 
Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening. And did I mention recently to please you know, advertise this podcast, let others know about it, uh, leave good reviews in your favorite podcast platform. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.